Okay guys, let me share some stuff with you. Um, so the video that I had just uploaded, I was actually in town when I did it. Shh! Hey! Quiet! Chihuahua's excited. Um, the video I showed you about uh, Free Grace Community, and this isn't going to be a personal attack on anybody in particular, but I am going to share a scripture concerning this subject. Because a few people that I talked to, and even in comments, I actually ended up finding another account. Because they did this, and they always give themselves out. So, um, I, uh, um, the, some people didn't understand what I was getting at as far as the particular comments went. Um, a couple people went and read the comments, and they were like, oh, wow. But when you make it, you're made aware of what's going on and then read it, you're like, oh, there it is. It jumps right out. There were accusations in that comment. Uh, even Jennifer Frazier went back and looked at it again. It's like, oh, because she said, hey, I didn't feel right, that comment. Several people have this same person commenting on their channels. They're going back and looking at those comments. They're now seeing what I was talking about. I don't do this stuff off the hip. This is after much research and digging into their accounts, looking at their uh, the evidence that they're showing, who they're subscribed to, the videos that they've posted. That kind of stuff tells tales on people. The big fact, a big the big thing that jumped out at me, well, first of all, it was the text, the type of text. Diamond Justification, he verified that. He goes, yeah, I've seen that before. The type of text this person was using was the exact same type of text the other person was using, the other seven people were using, <laughs> on and on and on. They forget that they do this. It's, these are inherent qualities that mark them specific from other people. The other thing was when you go on to the dude saved us and Free Grace Community and you look at the playlists, Free Grace Community has shared a bunch of the dudes, dudes with us um, playlists. The thing was... The playlists, some of the playlists matched between the two, but the dudes with us, the dude saved us, had certain playlists that Free Grace Community didn't have. Free Grace Community had certain playlists the dude saved us didn't have. Why would that be? That doesn't make sense. Because if you share a playlist, it's still their content, the other person's content you shared it from. If that person deletes that content, this that you shared now becomes useless. It doesn't do anything. It's just video removed by user. That wasn't the case. That means these two people are the same person, and he's sharing different content on different accounts. And then in, in the conversation me and the person we're having, which is mostly them talking, um, they admitted they have a bunch of extra accounts. Well, there you go. Um, so anyway, I'm not trying to attack one person in particular. The whole point of that wasn't Free Grace Community or the dudes saved us. The whole point of that was to warn you guys how subtle the enemy is. How so, he just, he's so slick and gets himself in there to uh, distract everybody and to cause problems for everybody. Hold on one second, let me deal with this dog. Okay, um, how slick they are. They go out of their way to word their comments so it seems like everything's good, it sounds good, but when you really pay close attention to their comment, you start to see where they're making mistakes at. And I actually had somebody, well, do you have a problem with their doctrine? Well, yeah, his doctrine's incorrect. What he quotes is incorrect because he puts a paragraph, puts scripture down there. When you go read the scripture, he only used two words out of the verse. Everything else he invented, it was incorrect. It wasn't right. And that's by design. They do that on purpose. These are people that take scripture. It seems good. Sounds good. If you don't take the time to test it, it looks fine. Then they twist it to make it suit their needs. This is why I show you guys what I'm telling you on the screen. There's no twisting to this. You can see what it says. So I can tell you whatever I want. All you got to do is look at the screen and go, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Christian. You didn't quote that right. That's not right. You twisted that scripture. I'm showing you what it means. So there's a problem with people like this. They have a, a mental issue and some kind of disorder that makes them think what they're doing is right, but yet they're claiming something they can't possibly have, and they're using it as a weapon against other people. I don't ever see those people pray for anyone in comments, ever, ever. They never bless anyone. They never, um, let's see, there was another one. Um, they never um, offer assistance of any kind, nothing. 
they only go into comment sections to post comments boosting their own ego to make them feel good about what they're doing, thinking they're getting their doctrine out there. And if we don't test it, it is posted out there. That gives them, that deep down inside, gives them joy. Psychologically, they receive a, a reward for doing that. Ah, yes, they, they don't know it's me. I got my comment in there. That's why they open account after account after account after account. After. There's no purpose to having multiple accounts. I have another account. It's called Dirt Zen, uh, I think Dirt Zen 1. I don't use it. I was going to do off-road videos. Never used it. I used it as an example to do a video for uh, Lisa Boyce, but that was it. And uh, you'll never see comments from it anywhere else because I don't. Use, I just don't use it. But some of these people, they have ten or more accounts. Legiosium was another example. And when you shun them or you block them or turn the shoulder to them and say, "Well, you're incorrect on this," instead of them actually going, "Wait a second, let me go check." I'm going to go open another account so I can get in there and I can harass this person. No, th th there's a problem with that. Why are you on my channel and all, all our Grace channels when you don't agree with us? We're not on your channels telling you you're wrong. I went there, shared some scripture, I left. Some channels I haven't even been on. It's a, it's a, waste, of, it's a waste of time. But if we're not haunting you, why are you haunting us? Do you think you're actually going to make some headway? Because what you're doing completely denies the scriptures. I'm going to show you this. The first thing I want to show you, we're going to actually go, we're going to run through 1 John 4, 1 through 6, 2 Peter 3, 14 through 18, Jude 1, all of Jude 1, and 1 Timothy 1, 4, and 8, certain scriptures out of those. Because I, I really want everybody to understand what one, where I'm coming from, but two, how important it is that we pay close attention who we're interacting with. It used to be that wasn't a problem. Now it's a problem because they're doing everything they can to try to get in to destroy everything and the sanctity of the gospel by using the very gospel as a weapon. A lot of people, this is a foreign concept to them. Well, when you have, when you have years of experience dealing with people just like this, it's very easy to spot. And that's why I went out there and I warned a bunch of people about this stuff. And a whole bunch of you commented back and said, yeah, I remember that person. There's a reason why those people are doing the things they're doing, and it's not very good. So the first thing we're going to do is go 1 John 4, 1 through 6, and it's testing the spirits. You have to test the spirits. You must, above all, even me, anyone else, you must test what's being presented. Take what we are giving you. Take what they're posting. If they're posting scripture and they're giving you a big commentary, go test it. And if it's wrong, call them out. Don't be afraid to call them out. Wrong is wrong, plain and simple. I don't have no problem with people calling me out saying, hey, I think you're wrong on this. It's, but as soon as it gets nasty, that's when I start blocking people. Because this isn't a weapon. And if we're brothers and sisters, we're not to interact with each other that way. But this is used as a weapon a lot against brothers and sisters. Don't let them do this to you. So, test the spirits. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. False teachers, too. False Christians who, for some reason, have this idea in their head that their way is the only way to understand it. And if you don't agree with them completely, they will harass you and attack you. I've seen Free Grace Community and the dude with us go ham on people because they just hinted in their, com in their response that they disagreed with them a little bit. Just hinted. And they lost it and called them all kinds of nasty names. Sorry, not dealing with you. I don't have no time for you. By this, verse 2, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. I want you to be careful with this statement. We use this as a, as a, a, a do-all. As long as they confess this, they're of God. I want you to be careful. Because in demonic possessions or demonic um, influencing, a person can have the, the demon pull its influence just long enough to let that person confess Christ came in the flesh and then go back and influence them again. Um, sometimes it's referred to as bipolar or other things. Um, what's the other one? Uh, they give you crazy meds for it. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of what the name is. So you have to be careful if that person suddenly responds, yes, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. You can't take that as gospel. Because if they do that, but they go right back to hatred and right back to doing the things they're doing, there's a problem there. 
Now, they, they may still genuinely be saved, but there's influence going on. You have to guard this stuff. We're all subject to influence. The stronger we get and the more confident we get, the more understanding we have growing in faith, that influence becomes almost null and void. They can't get us. So they have to use outside forces to get to us. But young Christians or Christians that haven't come up in their faith to defend against these things or haven't learned how to defend against these things will get caught. You're going to see in the scriptures, we'll get caught up in these false doctrines and demonic influences without even knowing it. So it's very, you have to test. Now John says here, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So, when, if you use this as a litmus test and say, did, you, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh or not? And they say yes, and you take that for granted. Well, you just gave them the answer and said it for them. You have to get them to say it. Now, I did this one time with... Um, Saved by Grace, uh, Sarah Bradley, in a chat in on um, Renee, one of Renee Rowland's Thursday Throwdowns, and it took a couple of uh, took about seven tries, but then they finally said it. But they didn't say it. You looked at the wording. I was talking with Cody about this, and I said, "Look at the wording, Cody. Look at what she said. She didn't actually admit Christ came in the flesh, but it looked like it did due to the way the words were arranged." So, you have to use discernment on this. And it can get hard. In most cases, you're not going to have to worry about it. But guys, I've seen channels shut down because people like Free Grace Community, like Truth in You, get in there and browbeat that person to make them question their faith until they give up. That's why I block them. That's why I warn people about them. Now, when I warn you, I'm not telling you you got to block anybody. I'm just warning you. Hey, watch out for this person. And... In the couple of the conversations I had today, uh, some of the people came back and said, yeah, you know what, you're, you're right, I, I see it. Well, I'm just warning. You do what you want. I'm just warning you what's, what's going on because it can, it can start out fine but get very dangerous later. You're in a wooden boat and you got a bunch of kids in there. One of them sitting there just picking at splinters on the bottom of the boat. Eventually, they're going to pick a hole in that thing and that boat's going to sink. Do you keep letting them pick, it, pick at it like that? No. Nope. You know they're in a bad area, put it to a stop. So, you got to step up and you have to uh, take matters into your own hands. It may seem harsh, but you're not killing them by cutting them off and, and having fellowship with them. They can still see the videos. They can still have access to the information. They just can't comment. And they're not going to die. Everything will be fine. So if you have a problem that pops up like that, deal with it. Don't be afraid to deal with it. Because the, the, the problems they cause later can be horrendous. Then you've got to do damage control. Verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because who he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He knows, or he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let me read that again. Listen to what he says. You better go find a place to hide. I'm getting tired of you. Go. 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 Ain't having it. Go. No. I'm watching you. I'm watching this dog. Okay. Let me read this again. So you guys hear what he's saying. Listen closely. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. So when you're around people who are, you, you, you're like, okay, I got it. They're of God. Now we still got to test spirits. But they're of God. You listen to what they say. And you take that and you go and you test it. Okay, they're right. I'm going to correct myself. Simple. He who is not of God does not hear us. How many of these people have you gone and taken the scriptures and go, wait a second, you misquoted that scripture. I did not. And they just start railing on you and all this kind of stuff. Well, no, look, here's what the scripture says. And, well, you were wrong. You quoted it wrong. You interpreted it completely backwards from what it says. Or, as is the case that I've run into about five times now, 
people have quoted scripture and I've gone there and said, that scripture talks about something completely different than what you're talking about. That doesn't even pertain to the subject that you're talking about. Well, it doesn't really matter anyway. Well, yeah, actually it does. If you're going to quote scripture, at least quote the correct scripture. And I'm just trying to show them, you, you made a mistake here, you might want to go find the right scripture. Well, twice, twice since the beginning of 2019, somebody went back, looked at it, and went, uh-oh, you know what, you're right, I did misquote that. Every other time, and it's actually been five main times, but it's probably been 30, they either ignore me, block me, or they completely don't want anything to do with correcting the mistake that they made. They just keep on big, long paragraphs, big, long stories. And there's a problem there. If we're all brothers and sisters and one of us steps up and says, hey, I think you may be mistaken on this. This is my brother or sister. Okay, let, uh, give, give me your insights and let me go dig into this to see if I'm, I'm right or wrong so we, I can fix it. And I have a, on a couple occasions, me personally. Other people have too. They've done correction videos. Hey, I was wrong about this. Somebody pointed this out and I fixed it. These people, you can tell because right away they'll attack you. If you even hint that you're disagreeing with them, instantly there's a bunch of name calling and attacks. That's a problem. That's what he's referring to here. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, can a Christian have a spirit of error? Absolutely. None of us get it perfectly right. That's why we listen to each other. Because you may have an insight I miss. You share that insight with me. Ah, okay, you know what? You're right. And I've, I've done that. And several of you have done that concerning me. And we fixed it. Um, but these people won't do that. You even, even look like that you're going to disagree with them. They lose their mind. All right, now let's go over to 2 Peter 3, 14 through 18. Okay, this is final words. Therefore, beloved, look forward to, to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace. Him who? Jesus. In peace, without spot and blameless. Too many, and I have to, I have to say this, and it's not anything derogatory against anybody, too many Christians get the idea stuck in their head they have to be nice to everybody. You can be a Christian and not be nice. Jesus, there was several occasions Jesus wasn't nice. Jesus was flat forward and told him, hey, no. So, um, being nice is one thing. Standing firm and confident in what the truth is and correcting somebody who is obviously wrong, that's being nice. You're, uh, I shared scripture in Psalms. You know, better is the wounds of a friend than the kiss of an enemy. It's better for you to call them out ahead of time, get them corrected, even if you do it in a rough way. That way they get the correction. They fix it. Because some people, you got to hit them in the head with a hammer to get them to hear. Then they fix it, and then they're better off on the other end. If you're too nice to people and, and are just, well, I don't want to stir up trouble. Jesus isn't looking down on you for standing up for the gospel. If you know something is truth and you see clearly somebody's doing something wrong, stand up and say something. He's not going to look down on you, but he's actually going to commend you for having the guts to stand up and go, wait a second, that's not right. You need to fix that. That's, that's a complete misinterpretation of that scripture you just shared. And now you're browbeating people with it and using it as a weapon against the brothers and sisters. That's wrong. They know that's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. Well, Christ isn't going to look down on you for that. He's going to commend you for stepping up. These people may attack you. That's okay. You went to them. You shared it with them. They didn't want to. They refused it. Block, uh, mark and avoid. Block them and move on. The Bible tells us to do, do these things. What I do on my channel, I'm not doing anything outside of what the Bible tells me to do. Now, there's a lot of those people that I've blocked that will say, oh, he blocks, with, blocks anybody who disagrees with him. No. Only people who are nasty. Only people who are preaching a false doctrine and won't listen to reason. I know I don't get it 100% right, but I can sure read the Bible and understand what I'm reading. Pretty simple. Pretty easy. Okay, verse 15. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also, listen, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand 
which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction. Many of the scriptures that are put out by these people almost always come from Paul's writings. Just a second. Okay, so almost all the time, these kind of people who are twisting the scriptures out, they, they almost exclusively, no, nah, no, nah, I can't say that. But in a lot of cases, in most cases, it's Paul's writings they're twisting. It's Paul's writings that they're sharing. And they're misinterpreting them. They're using them as a weapon. Oh, wait, but you're not saved because you didn't do this. And you don't have that. Look, here's what this says in Romans. Or here's what this says in... <sighs> Why are you going after brothers and sisters in Christ? Go to the lost and teach to the lost. I had somebody uh, give me grief about how I was explaining something on here. This was a month ago about how I was explaining something on here. And uh, he, they said, you know, younger Christians aren't going to be able to receive this very well. I said, my channel is not for young Christians. My channel is not for new Christians. They had no more to say about it. So, <laughs> it is what it is. My, this channel is not for new Christians. New Christians come here. They ask questions when they have them and I answer them. But this channel wasn't geared for new Christians. It was geared for new Christians. Of course, that was back in the beginning of 2019 when it was. If this was geared for new Christians, I would say it is for new Christians, but it's not. We serve a buffet of spiritual food here, heavy-duty spiritual food, big meals. When I lay out a spread, I try to lay out as big a spread as I can, like this video. So discernment, testing everything. We have to watch who we're dealing with. And I do this video like this because I want to warn you guys. I see some of y'all trying to be really nice. This isn't derogatory or negative. You're trying to be nice. That's awesome because I used to try to be nice all the time. And then I got beat up for it over and over and over and over again. I don't want to see you guys get beat up like that. I've seen channels shut down at the end of last year because of pe those people that I'm doing this video about browbeating them nonstop and they finally couldn't take it no more and shut off their channel. I don't want to see that happen. I know you guys are strong. I trust y'all. Y'all got it. That's why I don't tell you what to do. I just, hey, watch out for this person. You do what you want uh, with the information I give you. But... If I'm seeing it, it's because I've dug through the information to try to find what's going on with this person and made the connections to it. Uh, I'm not just sharing it just out of the blue. But uh, it, it can get dangerous. It can get real dangerous. Um, uh, are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures? That's another common characteristic, as you'll see, they'll take one scripture, use two, three words, half a sentence, and go nuts with it, tearing down your complete argument. Whoa, hold on there, Tiger. There's a whole other verse there you need to focus on. Actually, you need to take it into context and read ten verses, but they don't do that. They only use that one they can use as a weapon, or in one case, half a scripture. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. This is why you test everything. Don't just take what somebody says for granted. It may look fine. It may sound fine. There's a couple of people that put the, what is it, uh, is it John Armstrong, I think? Puts the big, long love letters and stuff like that. I've read every one of them. I wanted to make sure, and it's nothing against him personally, I wanted to make sure there was nothing derogatory hidden in the speech to make sure that I wasn't allowing something to be posted because a lot of his stuff goes to spam because uh, of the way he comments. Um, that's YouTube's al algorithm. But um, I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything derogatory hidden in there because I've seen it before. I've had to block you know, 100 comments and delete 100 comments from someone who was hiding derogatory statements in there. And when I finally read them, it's like, oh, no, that's got to go and had to get rid of them. So I, I check everything. I test everything. And it's not that I don't trust you guys. I'm doing what the Bible's telling me to do. Test everything. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to go to Jude 1. All right. Judgment on false teachers. As we go through this, you're going to see why I picked this scripture to, to, to do in this particular video. There's a, excuse me, there's a really bad problem with people either teaching a false doctrine 
or they're teaching a twisted doctrine. It kind of follows along because, you know, they know if they come completely against once saved, always saved, they're going to get shut down every time. Well, they're getting slick now. They're like, well, let me do this instead. Let me say this instead and get my doctrine in there. It never dawns on them, well, wait a minute. Let me stop and look at this and see if maybe I'm making a mistake. They automatically think they're right, no, everybody else is wrong, and they're going to do everything they can, even up to and including creating a dozen other counts, just to get into your comment sections to preach their doctrine. Go make your own videos. You don't need to come in here and put this stuff in our uh, comment sections. Make your own videos. Go make your own videos. You don't need to put your links to your videos in my comment section either. Now, there's a couple of people like um, uh, Paul. Um, uh, he does that, and it, it pertains to particular subjects of videos he's done. I, I go ahead and, and approve those links and let those post in there. He's got a great channel, got a lot of good content. Uh, actually, Paul, I apologize because I've never actually mentioned your channel before. Um, I'm going to do a video on all the channels I support. I'll put it. I'll tell you his own channel name in there, and there'll be links. But um, some people put stuff in there, and the stuff they put in there, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, where? What is this? That's weird out there stuff. No, 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 no. no I, I turn that stuff away because that creates a problem because now you're trying to preach a doctrine that doesn't match the Bible. They're going off of supposition. They're going off other people's content. Much of what I find is other people's content. Now, this, these people may be believers. They may be saved, but they're caught up in fairy tales. They're caught up in things that aren't real. Um, th this huge misunderstanding about America being Babylon. I, I get people every couple of days, somebody puts a link in, in there and it gets held for notification, held for uh, review. And I got to go look at it and it's like, come on, you guys, none of that, none of that, what they post matches scripture. Yet the video I did showing it was Israel, how much script, five, almost 500 scriptures. Yet these other people get mad at me, but it's like, well, okay, where's your video? Let's see your proof. Nobody to date has stepped up because there are no scriptures that talk about it. America didn't exist back then. For all intensive purposes, America was was Greece back then. It was the Grecian Empire because it, 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 it didn't exist, not till 1776. So why is the Bible going to talk about something that doesn't exist? Yet we go in the Bible and look at all these lands that are mentioned, and you can find them present day, still existing right now. God is consistent. Trust him in his word and trust him in what he does because he doesn't change things up or do things in a partial way. Everything he does is full on straight through. When you understand that, everything else starts to become very clear. So the false teachers, the false doctrines, the, the false post apostles, the false prophets, there's a judgment for them. I dare say even if they're a believer, there may be a judgment for them because I think believers get caught up in this too. There's such a fine line between this stuff. So in Jude 1, 3, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. This is a great, um, would it be an admonition? I guess it could be an admonition. To stand and contend. You know what the truth is? Stand for the truth. Now, are you walking in truth? Can you base what you're what you're de dealing with in Scripture? Not one verse, but Scripture. I want a full plate. G give me information. You guys said you liked all the detail. I'm giving you full plates of food here, as much as possible. Go test it. And I, I mean, I paid money for this to make sure I could give you guys the, the best content I could possibly prepare for you. That makes people mad too. <laughs> I don't understand why. <coughs> anyway. Right off the bat, in uh, the third verse of Jude, he's saying, stand and contend, guys. You know what the truth is? Stand for it. <sighs> Good, somebody else got it. Okay. Verse 4. For certain men have crept in unnoticed. Uh, 
turned out it was a scam caller, but it had a different name on there. <laughs> okay, so right off the bat here in verse 4, for certain men have crept in unnoticed. Are we seeing that now? We have that going on. After that video I did, I was going back and I, was, and I got home, I was checking comments. I found another account I had to block. That's how, These people, there's something wrong with them. What would possess you to think that it's normal? Well, I got th this account got blocked because of the stuff that I said. Well, let me go open up another account. Oh, you know what? Let me open up four or five more accounts. Let me open up a dozen accounts. I'm going to keep harassing these people because I'm right, they're wrong, and I'm going to make sure I tell them about it. There's, a, there's something wrong with that. I use one account, this one, and this is what I comment with. And I don't go to their channels and comment on their stuff because it's, it doesn't do any good anyway. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Well, that tells me that these, some of these, some, not all, some of these people have already, already had condemnation before they were born. They, they were already there. God already knew, and that's what they were going to do. So you're going to have people that are going to put on this visage of Christianity. But it's not really there. It just looks like it, but it's not there. There's an anti to everything. There's Christ, there's antichrist. There's prophet, there's anti-prophet, there's apostle, there's anti-apostle. There's Christian, there's anti-Christian. There's, there's an opposite for everything because Satan is trying to copy all this stuff. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. What does lewdness mean? Close that, open that. Crude and offensive in a sexual way. So that's what they're doing with the Word of God. They're making it crude, offensive, and they're, in some cases, adding a sexuality to it. All the videos I did about the bride. Oof, that got me a whole lot of trouble. trouble. But that's okay, I didn't mind. So, and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But but wait, you'll, you hear them mention the Lord. You hear them talk about it. Look close at what they're saying. Do they ever name Jesus specifically? They'll say Lord, or they'll say God, or some other term, but they won't specifically use his name. Why not? I, I got into it with a guy one time. 32 responses to a, a, a thread. I said, say his name. He wouldn't say it. I said, say his name. Type his name in this chat right now. I want to see you do it. Wouldn't do it. Finally, after 32 back and forth, they gave up. Would not type Jesus Christ. Refused to do it. Why? What's the problem? Because in every comment, it was always Lord or God, but they wouldn't go any further than that. They wouldn't expound on it. So, who died and came to the flesh? Wouldn't say it. You know who it was. No. You tell me who it was. I want to see you type it. I want to see you admit it. They wouldn't admit it. It's crazy. But that's what we're dealing with here. They look and sound, walk like a duck, talk like a duck, for all purposes. You can t you can look at them and go, "That's a Christian," but it's not there on the inside. There's a problem there. There's a, there's a struggle going on, or it's just demonic. And you see here in verse four, he says that there were people that were marked for this condemnation, way back at the beginning. Verse five. But I want to remind you. Though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Whoa, is that a rapture verse? Could be. Having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. A lot of people said, I've heard people say, oh, they've already been destroyed. That's the end of it. But it says they're still suffering. There's other passages that talk about them still suffering. And their cities are still there 3,000 years later. Piles of ash. Ash, you can just touch it and it falls apart. Why, hasn't, why hasn't, haven't the rains... They get torrential storms over there. Why haven't the rains destroyed it after 3,000 years? That's God's power. That's an example to people who are perverting the word. 
who are go doing everything they can to use it for their gain and use it as a weapon. Likewise also, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. I was going to mention someone's name, but I don't want people to think this is, some, this is a way to mark people. Some of you can probably figure out pretty easily what I'm talking about. There's a pretty clear hate group and a love group for this particular individual. Very famous, very on the scene in almost all the news articles right now. What I notice, and this isn't every instance, but it's most of the instances. What I notice, those with the hatred, the pure hatred of this person, there's a problem with their doctrine and their understanding. Those who don't have it, even those who are just like, I don't particularly care for him, but you know what? We don't have a choice. We have to deal with him. So they don't hate him. They just don't have a particular like for him. They have their doctrine right. They're in the truth. Just something I noticed. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Clearly, this was someone who was evil. And they've known from the beginning that Satan messed up from the beginning. He's evil. And the, arch, the archangel Michael didn't even do any, didn't even use a, a negative word against him. So the Lord rebuke you. Yet we have brothers and sisters out here using, or supposed brothers and sisters, using the word of God as a weapon against other brothers and sisters. Where's the problem? Evidently, there's an issue there. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, understanding. And whatever they know naturally, like brute, brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. They go after greed. They go after, you know, make me feel good. They go after uh, pride. Um, they want to be validated. But everything they don't understand, they speak negatively of it. They speak evil of it. They attack it. Woe to them. And here's the thing, is they see these scriptures and it doesn't even register with them. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit, and perished at the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Sounds to me like he's talking about people within our group, right? Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved <coughs> the blackness and darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grum against him, against Jesus. That's funny too that this says that because there was somebody, they was like, well it says as long as I don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit I can say and do whatever I want. I was like, I don't want to be you when you see him. So good luck with that way of thinking. This was last year sometime. But it says right here, he's going to go after the ones that talk negative about him. <laughs> These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. And we see that. And it's terrible. And what's terrible is, is that on the outside they seem like they're our brothers and sisters, but on the inside they're not. Now he gives a call to persevere. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Not having the spirit. He's talking about brothers and sisters. People within the group. In the book of Acts, in the other epistles, you'd see the apostles talking about that. Naming people specifically, this guy, this guy, this guy. They're all perverting the word. We need to get them out of the church. A couple of them were running churches. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. So if you got somebody in your comment section trying to cause divisions, call them out. Don't be afraid to stand your ground. This is your channel. Those are your videos. That's your content. 
You dictate what goes on there. They should feel privileged you even let them comment because you have the ability to shut your channel, your comments off. Robert Breaker almost got pushed to the point. I, I was watching his videos when there were comments. He almost got pushed to the point of shutting his channel down. He finally shut his comments off. Hasn't had him active since. So what, what did they do? They went to his website, got his email, and now they send him harassing emails. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some, have compassion. Listen. And on some, we're in, we're in Jude 122. This color is terrible. And on some, have compassion. Making a distinction. But others, save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So some people you can be nice to. Some people you can be pleasant with and gentle with. Some you have to hit them right in the face with a dirty old hickory tree limb you picked up off the ground. you got to bust them right across the chops and tell them, sit. It's time for you to listen. They don't want to listen? Go away. It sucks, but it has to be done. And you're not being mean to them, because if you save them and lead them to truth, you've done them a, a good a service. Uh, you've helped them. So don't be afraid to block people. Don't be afraid to call people out. You know what the truth is. Contend for that truth, even in your comment, especially in your comment section. I try to keep mine clear. I don't see every comment, so if you guys run across somebody that starts talking smack, I don't catch it. Let me know about it so I can go find it. Uh, whatever video it's on, I can go find it and deal with it. I don't. I control that stuff and don't let people do that stuff because I don't want you guys to have to come here and be harassed. I want you guys, and I saw a lot of fellowship the other night. I want you guys to be able to fellowship with each other and pray for each other and communicate with each other and link up. It's about bringing us together. But if you let somebody in there to cause division, that's a problem. Because now people are like, I don't want to comment no more. Some of y'all have admitted that to me. I quit commenting on some channels because they don't do anything about the haters. So I stopped commenting. I go in there, watch the video, like it, and move on. Uh, because I don't want to. I don't want to have to constantly have notifications of comments from this person. And th they're not good with just making a comment. They'll comment over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, trying to get your attention, thinking that they're doing something because they have a mental problem. There's an issue there. So, down here, verse 22 and verse 23. Have compassion on some. Making a distinction. Figure, you gotta look at it and discern who you can have compassion on and who you can't. Or, have compassion up to the point that you need to stop having compassion. Others, save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hence why I'm doing this video, and hopefully these people are going to see it. They've got enough of their accounts <laughs> subbed to me. Hopefully they'll see it. Okay, now we're going to go to 1 Timothy 1. Y'all thought we were done. Heck no, we're going to beat this one up. Warning against false teachers. I'm just covering a few. There's actually a bunch in here. I'm just covering a few. Um, boom. As I urged you, we're in 1 Timothy 1.3, as I urged, urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So here's, you're going to see one of those examples of people that were teaching wrong in the beginning in the churches. Nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in the faith. So there's certain discussions we need to avoid. Now the purpose of the, com of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. I've had people tell me, well, are you showing love by blocking people? Absolutely I am. Because if they're condemning themselves by the comments they're making on these videos, causing division and casting hatred and doubt on brothers and sisters, by me blocking them from commenting, I'm keeping that from going on their account. By stopping them, they're not doing that anymore on my on my page. So they're... That, stuff that they would have done that would have been well you know you were on this guy's channel look at here you know that's that's being taken away i'm blocking them from causing themselves more harm in a way it's trying to help them it may not seem like it but it is 
the hope is, is that at some point, it's like, why are so many people blocking me? Let me take another look at myself. Go look in the mirror, you know. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. How do we get a good conscience? You're doing the things you know the Bible says you're to do concerning these issues. That's why we study the scriptures. From which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk. So, what was he just talking about? And from, and from sincere faith? Sincere faith, not fake faith? From which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, desiring to be teachers of the law. Who do we know that's doing that? Understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. And this is the biggest problem we have right now with what's going on, especially on YouTube, and even in the churches, they don't understand what they're teaching. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand what this all means and how it applies. That's why so many of them become teachers of the law, which you're not supposed to be doing, yet they're doing it. But, but look, he says, follow the commandments in verse 5. No, he said the commandment of love. I've shown this already. In 1 John, 2 John and 3 John. This is what they end up getting themselves into. And they think they're doing something good, but they don't understand what's going on. This The video I did about understanding. When you approach that, you start to learn these things that we see. Because a person... And I've had a few people do this. They start out one way. I was like, well, I challenge you to go read this instead. Go back and forth, go back and forth, nothing. This was back in 2019. Okay, look, here, do this. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Read those scriptures and then let me know what you think. Because I really think you're right on the verge of, of, a, of a revelation here. They go and they read it. Then they come back and they go, I never saw that before. You finally read the Bible. You read it, not somebody else reading it for you. And they, they're like, I see it. I see exactly what you're talking about in there. Finally, most of these people that we're talking about don't read the Bible. That's why they're in misunderstanding. Oh, they got a Bible open on there, but they're not reading it. It's just there on the screen, but they're not reading it. They're not actually pouring through that Bible looking for truth. They're pouring through that Bible looking for weapons. Looking for ammo against other Christians. Understanding neither what they say, nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person. But for the lawless and insubordinate. For the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So what did he just say? Did he just say we got to use the law right? Nope. The law only applies to one thing, all these people. And what's the punishment from them since they're all these things and can't fulfill the law? Death. That's why you need salvation in Christ. In Christ, no more law. There's a new law of liberty. Not to do what you want to do. To be able to be holy. To be able to get into truth. To be able to grow in faith. Whereas the law doesn't give you that at all. But there are people that want to teach the law. There are people that want to be this because it validates them. It makes them feel like they're doing something for God, for the kingdom. I'm doing something for him right now because he gave me charge for this. If you're not doing anything except you have faith, you're still doing something for him because your faith is more precious than anything. This that I'm doing here, this, this isn't... I'm not doing anything incredible or special for him. I'm just doing what I was called to do. But my faith is on the top of the list of all the things that are precious to him that he wants. My prayers run a close second. My love is right there with it. 
So, these people have a problem. And they go around and they think they're godly and they think they're this and they think they're that. But you know, many of them, if you go watch them in their lives on here, they're one way. Out there, completely different person. You almost wouldn't be, even be able to recognize them. They act so differently. Now see, to me, this is a problem with integrity. Because if you had integrity, you'd be the same way out there and, and on here. That's how you know you're a true born-again believer. The Holy Spirit won't let you be anything else. Because now your desires are to be that way all the time with everyone. Understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. And they, but yeah, they think they're doing something good and they're not. They're, they're condemning themselves and leading other people into darkness. And it's unnecessary. Because the word is very clear. All right, let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Some will depart from the faith. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. We see that. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. What does that mean? I hear a lot of people say this, but they don't explain what that means. Having your conscience seared with a hot iron isn't conviction. Having your conscience seared with a hot iron kills it so you don't feel anything anymore. Because the hot iron burns through the, the nerve endings. And eventually you, just, you don't feel it. You don't feel any pain or anything. You ever seen a burn victim? Burned over most of their body? It, it burns down to the point where all the nerve endings are dead. And they don't feel any pain anymore. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. He's telling you very clearly, don't let these people get you hung up in dumb stuff that isn't biblical. Oh, you better stay away from pork. Why? God made it clean. We can all partake in it. Give thanks and eat. Oh, you can't have uh, shellfish because they're bottom feeders. You can't have catfish because they're bottom feeders. Or nothing with skate. Why? God has made everything clean. Give thanks and eat. But see, you have to have understanding. You have to reach that point of understanding to know these things. But a lot of people get hung up in that stuff and their understanding never grows. And when I go, when I used to watch their videos, I see that I see and hear the frustration, and they take it out on everyone else with anger. But they're frustrated, they're confused, and they don't know how to get out of this. Instead of just stepping back and going, you know what, I'm wrong, and I need to get this right, and humbling themselves and going into truth, because once you get into there, and you, some of y'all can confirm this, the the burden just lifts off your shoulders. And you feel like a thousand pounds is gone. And you're just free. Because all this stuff is a burden. And they keep taking it and piling it onto people. And killing people with it. And it's not necessary. I love when they stood like that dude, Paul, Moses. I, I love when he starts calling me names. Do you really think that has any effect? That means nothing. It's just words. But you're sitting here doing this, thinking you're affecting me, but all you're doing is affecting yourself. And you're sitting there quoting scriptures using that kind of language. What's the matter with you? That's not right. That's, in no book, that's right. But that's what they do. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they're doing God a service. If in the right circumstances, that guy with the mentality he has would shoot me right in the head, thinking he was doing God, doing something good for God. That's the kind of mentality we're dealing with. And you're going to see that in the tribulation. They're going to kill Christians thinking they're doing, thinking they're, they're godly, thinking they're doing something good for God. I had a couple of Christians one time try to fist fight me, thinking they were doing the right thing for God. It's like, where's that in the Bible? Oh, yeah, it's in there. Really? Show me the scriptures. That's how people's minds get. They never grow past a certain point. And they get so hung up in false doctrine and misunderstandings. And it's terrible, terrible to see it. Okay. Um, 1 Timothy 6. This is the last one. 
I promise. False teachers and true contentment. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. To teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, the once saved, always saved deniers, when I share them the very words of Christ, they tell me, Christ didn't say that, really, because I just copied and pasted it from the Bible. Those are Christ's words. No, no, he didn't say that. That's a doctor of demons. He didn't say that. Okay. See ya. <laughs> Good luck with that. He is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words. And that's the problem we have here. Arguing over words. From which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. So he's telling you when you run across these people, get away from them. Don't deal with them. When you can clearly bring that out in the open, shut them down. You're not doing them a disservice. You're helping yourself. But you're setting them loose for, the, for Satan to go get them and destroy the flesh. Maybe that soul can get saved. It does no good to deal with people like this. We've tried. I spent all of 2019 trying until the very end. Finally, I was like, oh, I'm not having this anymore. This is ridiculous. They argue for the sole purpose of arguing. They're not contending for truth or faith. They argue for the sole purpose of arguing. They fight for the sole purpose of fighting. Not for truth. Not for justice. Just fighting. And it has nothing to do with the word. That just happens to be the language they're using. Um, now godliness and contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. Excuse me. Fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, at what point do you draw the line? I've drawn my line. You disagree? doesn't matter. As soon as you get nasty, that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to converse with people like that. That's childish and it's unnecessary. We're children of God. We believe in the same Lord Jesus Christ. We should be able to interact as brothers and sisters, agree or disagree, interact with bro as brothers and sisters on a, in a professional adult manner. As soon as I see somebody that can't do that, done. See ya. There's some people I've shadow banned because I, they sub, I get the notification, I go to their channel, and they got some weird stuff on their channel. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not having this. Now, they may be genuine, but just by looking at some of the stuff that they agree with, it's like, wow, okay, well, I'm just going to dodge this bullet right now. Did I do them something wrong? Nope. They came to watch videos. The fact that they can't comment, it's not, it's, it's not hurting them. It's not killing them. If I shut my comments off right now, would it affect anybody negatively? Nope. Still get morning prayer, still get evening prayer. Y'all still got my email. We can converse on different apps. I mean, there, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on out there that we can use. But the thing, the whole thing of this is, this is a problem with these people. And we have to, and that's the purpose of this video. You have to use discernment and be careful who you're talking to. Um, it, it sucks that we can't trust people who say they're godly. You have to watch them. Um, I've had to do this with several people in my life. Um, Christians. Um, because he, Christians can get, they can be mean and hateful and spiteful too. But I've had to watch them. I've had to watch my back around them. Because of certain things that I saw. Um, started to get a real sense of some very evil thoughts going on in Christians in my life here this last year. I've since separated myself from a whole bunch of them. Because what... The, we were on the right track, but there was some point where they started doing this and swerving. And we're tracking together, but they're swerving in, in their belief, getting caught up in terrible things. You know, and, and 
at some point you got to stop and go, I'm not going to do this anymore. Lord, change me. Change me to have the heart you want me to have, not this stuff. Lead me away from this mess and this nonsense. I don't want to partake in it. And that's what you do. It's hard. It's a struggle. And we're always fighting and contending with evil spirits that are trying to influence us. But the more understanding we have on this and how this stuff works, and you get that from reading more of the scripture and studying, the more you are able to stand against those things. Ephesians 6, put that armor on every morning. It's a quick prayer. Just pray, pray, put the armor on and go on. Lord, I put this armor on today. And you start reading it out of Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. And simple. Amen. And that's it. And get yourself prepared. Mentally prepare, spiritually prepare, then you're physically prepared. So when the, the enemy stands before you and starts casting those doubts, you, you know, and they're doing this right in your face, do you love God? Yes, I love God. Do you love Jesus Christ? Yeah. Then why are you yelling at a son of God? Oh, you're not a son of God. Really? Because if we believe in the same God, doesn't that make us brothers? Well, well, okay, so why are you why are you trying to kill me and with words? Why are you hating on me when I'm your brother in Christ? I had this I'm telling you this because I had a conversation outside of a store here in Texas. But that's not what my intent was. Okay, but that was your intent because otherwise you wouldn't have engaged me. I don't know you because I had, I had a sticker on my vehicle. I don't know you. You don't know me. But you saw something that caused you to have this uncontrollable desire to come and to engage me in a very negative manner when we both believe in God. We both believe in Christ. In what Bible passage does it say that's right? Uh, actually, it's not right. I said, like, no, it's not. That day, I was prepared. So I didn't respond in, in like manner. I responded with peace and patience and talked him down. Now, I've had other people do that where I've had to get in their face. I laid a guy over, oh, bent his back over and laid him over on his hood on his truck one time. He, he wouldn't, he would look like he was about to swing. So I stood on his feet, pushed him over and held him on his hood. I was like, you better get a grip, dude. <laughs> There was no scripture sharing at that moment. I had to show him that I wasn't a pushover and I wasn't going to take his stuff. Obviously, he wasn't Christian. He had something else going on. I shut him down. I finally told him, I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get back in your truck and leave. I don't ever, don't ever walk up to me again. Turn around, didn't say a word. Got in his truck, wouldn't even look at me. Pulled out and left. There's a demon in that guy. And you're going to run into that kind of stuff. It, it happens. Hopefully, most people won't run into that kind of stuff. But that's what we're fighting with and dealing with every day. And even something as innocuous as a comment here on YouTube, if, if, it, if it's put in the right context and worded the right way, can cause division and cause problems because it plants a little tiny seed of doubt in somebody's mind. And if they just get one, that's all it takes. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this video. That's why I'm telling you guys, be careful who you're talking to. Test those comments and read those comments. And if they don't, if they quote scripture, go look at the scripture and see if it applies. And if you see something that's not right, don't be afraid to call. I've done it to some of you guys. You've, you've posted something and I was like, wait a second, what do you mean by that? Because I didn't understand what you were getting at. I called you out and you responded properly and you said, this is what I was talking about. Okay, I got it now. I misunderstood. You corrected me. We went on with it and y'all are still here. That's what we do. If you see something that doesn't seem right, say something. So be careful, guys. Be careful in this what you're doing, especially here on YouTube, because we're fighting the good fight of faith. We are standing and contending for the truth. And it is so important that we stay focused on that truth. These other things are distractions. If it's obvious this person doesn't want to have a proper adult discourse or even a godly discourse in any way, mark and avoid, push them out of the way, go sit down, be quiet, let the adults talk. We don't have time for you. And uh, you're not doing them a disservice. You're just moving the junk out of your way so you can go and preach to the people who really need it. Because there's a lot of people out there that really need help and understanding and, and prayer. They need a lot of prayer. That's why I do two prayers now on my, on my channel. People need it. Y'all have testified that to me. You love it. You need it. Awesome. That's what we're going to do. That's the goal. And maybe we can lead somebody to Christ. And maybe we can lead somebody to a better understanding along the way. 
couple more scriptures, and then we're out of here. Fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6.11, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Remember when we, we did this the other day? What commandment was it? Let's see. He said it up here, or no? Did he say it in this one, or was it the last one? Let's see. Must be the commandment of fleeing things. Um, a blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and the potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Actually, I didn't share this one. I did a video earlier and was in this scripture and realized it wasn't going to come out right and deleted it. Okay, so this is perfect. Who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present age to not be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. I'm going to go back over the last two verses again. One more time. O Timothy. We're in 1 Timothy 6.20. Guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. He's talking about believers who have taken something holy and perfect and have completely ripped it to pieces, reassembled it to suit their desires and their lusts. Discern the truth. Test the spirits. Take the time to take what people say, including me, and bounce it off the scriptures. See if it's true. And if you find it to be true and godly, stick with it. If you find it to be in question, question it. Don't be afraid to question. Don't be afraid to call out. You're not hurting yourself and you're not hurting the other person. In fact, if it works out right, you may actually save another person. That's a good thing. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you guys in the next video.